Hello guys, welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this particular video, I'm going to talk to you about some of the questions which many people ask me related to AWS jobs. Uh, now, uh, it happens that uh, nowadays people are trying to, you know, uh, trying to switch or learn AWS uh, because uh, there is so much uh, so much noise in the market that uh, cloud is the cloud is the next thing and uh, you know people also get really good pay hikes uh, if they know some of these latest technologies so uh, that because of that a lot of people want to learn AWS and I get a lot of questions uh, specifically asking that uh, you know this is my background and then what particular thing I should do on cloud and many of the times people are not clear uh, that uh, that how does the whole responsibility change uh, happens after moving to the cloud so what what I'm gonna do in this video is I have listed down some of the questions uh, which I'm going to answer I hope you know you would find it useful and uh, uh, if any of your friends uh, also have similar questions you can help them by answering that or by you know sharing this video I request you to subscribe to the channel if you have already not done so we have really good playlist go ahead and look at the playlist where we have uh, videos in place for uh, solutions architect and sysops administrator track already and you will find them practical all right so moving on to the questions <clears throat> the first question is how is the role of a dba changing with the adoption of cloud or aws now uh, those of you who, who have been you know playing with different aws services you would know already that uh, AWS has these, you know, kind of managed services like RDS, Redshift, DynamoDB. There is a Neptune database also released recently. Now, let's talk about the relational databases itself first. So maybe if there was a DBA who was who was earlier managing Oracle database or SQL Server, right? In 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 a in a traditional way. Now with the adoption of cloud, how what does it mean for that particular fellow? With the adoption of cloud, his responsibilities are going to change, of course. Now it does not uh, really mean that we would not need DBS at all. Uh, that's incorrect. But uh, but going forward, the many of the activities which DBS used to do typically is going to change. Now let's take one two scenarios. Um, if there is a person who is part of an organization. Uh, which is currently going through cloud which is currently going through this cloud transformation which means uh, they have a lot of um, uh, you know uh, databases running on prem right and now they are planning to move it to cloud so in those scenarios uh, this particular uh, dba would be responsible to first understand and compare that uh, the different applications which are running on prem and using the database, let's say Oracle or SQL Server, if we start, uh, if we if we start migrating these applications to the cloud, whether the database, the RDS services, right, meaning RDS Oracle or RDS SQL Server, whether it would be able to support all the requirements which this application has or not, right? Or some of the times it might also be the case that we might have to tweak things a bit. Now, all of you know that we do not get access, like we cannot do SSH or RDP to the instances where RDS runs, right? You cannot go ahead and log into that Linux or Windows. All you do is you connect via your, uh, you know, database management tools like SQL Developer, SQL Server Management Studio, and you interact with that with the database, right? So some of those POCs you would be doing. Uh, further to that. Uh, the, the person should understand even though he you know he comes from a DBA background now that things are moving to cloud he should understand some of the important things on AWS meaning what is a VPC how does VPC work uh, what is the role of or, or how, what, what is the meaning of public and private subnet uh, where should we go ahead and actually launch databases what are the different parameter groups and option you know parameters and options available with RDS all of such things he should go ahead and spend some time and read through in detail in addition to that now um, in case of on-prem environment where our guys used to install 
uh, databases at that time uh, you know if they wanted to become become the big user or let's say you know the, the sys user basically right let's say that so it was a lot simpler but now when uh, when we want to execute similar type of commands like sys dba level of commands on the on cloud or on rds aws has uh, explained in the documentation that how can you go ahead and do it still uh, you know with the with, with the with some of the customized commands which they have written so some of those things they should surely go ahead and read through and they should go ahead and experiment right so the role of dba is not going anywhere but some of things would change like they will not have to worry about lot of backups monitoring because most of those things are are built into this these services which are like rds or you talk about dynamo db or redshift now dynamo db is fully managed so you don't have to do anything but for the other ones so but 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 still the when it comes to the overall optimization uh, you know sometimes looking at the things that uh, whether uh, things are properly spread or not the whole management of indexes and all which db is used to optimize all such things they would still do right it's just that the typical backup um, all those routine jobs which were there those are going out okay so i hope that gives you some idea what are the types of jobs possible with aws knowledge now a uh, lot of guys are as i told you are trying to switch or are trying to learn aws so but but the question which they have is that they have been doing a particular type of work till now and uh, after learning aws how how is it going to help them so guys first thing just learning aws alone uh, not sure if it would help you unless until you are a fresher and you you get deep into aws alone uh, and then uh, you know you get a job where of course because you are a fresher so the person who is hiring you would comparatively have lesser expectations from you and you get basically that buffer period to grow right so that is one thing but other than that people who are experienced who have been working anywhere from 4 years to let's say 10 years 12 years you have been working on some technology or the other just learning aws alone and you know trying to uh, might not help straight away but yes what you will have to understand is the type of work which you are doing cloud is is is, is coming in everywhere so let's say if if there was a person who was uh, typically you know take example of guys like windows administrators linux administrators and people like that so they have been doing uh, all of these things but now their company has decided that they are going to move to cloud so yes they would they would continue to do windows windows administration and linux administration but uh, many of the things will change right the way backups would be done the way golden ima gold images would be maintained some of those things are going to change the way they were uh, they were probably earlier uh, you know they were looking at uh, uh, scripting or, uh, or or doing the post provisioning meaning after creation of the instance or server the n number of uh, activities which you do the way they were doing that on prem now that might change on cloud because on cloud you would get a lot more uh, automation mechanisms you can go ahead and use that right so uh, what what you need to understand what you will have to try and uh, find out is that related to your job how the cloud is coming in and uh, and that way it is it is it is going to help now there are different types of roles of course which are po which are possible like some of them i have written just as guideline like pure technical roles so people who uh, uh, who would who would be working very closely uh, with aws console now either via console or via scripting uh, meaning guys who would actually provision things people and guys who would uh, who would be responsible for automating the whole stuff when i say automating writing cloud formation templates or using some other scripting format and uh, you know automating things uh, people would, these guys would be dealing with um, policies permissions roles a lot they would work, work with services like cloud formation service catalog and things like that so quite pure technical roles and then you have some of the business based roles as well these roles are uh, i would say comprise of uh, you know the jobs where you should have knowledge of aws a rough understanding that how aws works and then you might be responsible for the overall billing in your big organization right uh, 
breaking the cost and saying that okay this guy is responsible this particular project is incurring this much cost and whether they are following the best practices or not you might also get um, get a position in in teams which are there for business development so in every big organization there are there are there is a team which which actually works towards um, you know towards um, applying for or or let's say um, you know contesting for any proposal right so they they prepare all this bid responses so as part of that uh, you know you can you can get a position there if you understand pricing if you understand different services and a rough idea that when we should be using with service right of course if you are trying for that role make sure that your presentation skills are better are good you should know to work on pptts and all well right put things neatly and then you have management roles so guys who are 10 plus years uh, you have been in industry doing things uh, managing teams uh, for them as well, knowing cloud has become important because unless until you you know that how these services work and how some of the processes change when you move to cloud, uh, the guy under you is just gonna fool you actually, right? So that's how it works. So it's important that uh, that you spend some time at least uh, see and understand that what all what all facilities and capabilities are offered by the cloud platforms like AWS. So that's really important. What should freshers do? <clears throat> oh, I, I get a lot of questions uh, from fresher, from freshers. Seriously, so I'm I'm happy to see that uh, some of our guys uh, are uh, have become uh, vigilant and during the during college time itself now they want to learn because of course when they come out of college they want to get a job, but it is very important to understand guys that just by having an aws certification when you are coming out of college uh, nobody is just going to hire you right i appreciate that uh, i appreciate that you are that you are investing time and you are thinking to do something that's really good but then it is worth only if you do it in the right manner so what is the right manner to do it first of all uh, make sure that some of your basics are are in place I have I have a different uh, video on the channel. If you have time, you can go ahead and look at it, where I've explained also that uh, how to get started on AWS, right? But but just to brief, you should have some of the things in place, like make your networking basics clear. Understand at least uh, how does the IP work, uh, IP addressing works. Um, what about public private IPs and things like that, right? Uh, understand that. In addition to it. Uh, Go ahead and spend some time on Windows and Linux uh, administration. You don't have to be a very big uh, master there, but at least you should understand how the file system works, how the uh, how the permission is there, and things like that. You should spend some time, right? Uh, most many of the guys uh, finish their four years of uh, uh, professional degree without even with, without even trying such things. So make sure that your um, that your um, Windows Linux skills are there in place. In addition to that, learn at least one programming. Python is good, um, or you can pick up uh, any other thing. Uh, my suggestion would be if you learn uh, one out of the four which is supported by Lambda, that would be very good. So Lambda supports uh, Node.js, Java, C Sharp, and uh, Python, right? So if you if you choose one out of these four, it is going to help you a lot because uh, for for a lot of automation uh, going forward, you would be using Lambda, right? So uh, if you know that language, it would be easy for you to script. I think Python should be easy, so try and learn that. There is a there is a website called Code Academy, I suppose, where they give you some really good examples, and you can learn in a non-boring manner, right? So go ahead and try it out. So okay, to summarize for freshers, what you should do is one programming language, Linux, Windows, and this thing, and then you can go ahead and uh, uh, try your hands on AWS. Go ahead and do the certification. Good. But it should not be that you. It should not be in a way that you studied only for the certification, guys. You should, you should create a free tier account. No excuses that I'm there in college, so I cannot create an AWS account. From where would I get the money? No, uh, it is free. Understand that how can you utilize it for free? I have few videos on that. Go through it. Use it in a proper manner. Don't be careless and waste your money. And then you. You know, whatever services you are learning, you should go and do hands-on. That's the only way, only way with which you will be able to showcase that you have real knowledge. There are 50,000 uh, solution architects already there in market. So uh, if you want to just join and become 51st, uh, it's okay. But I don't think um, that is going to help a lot. Do the certification and have knowledge as well so that you get 
to you go to the right place that's my request so for for freshers does, you can choose any one out of the three associate certifications it's it's perfectly fine whichever suits you i have uh, you know i have a uh, tutorial where i explain even the syllabus and the common things which are between the three so you can go ahead and pick up any any one out of the three doesn't matter much at this point whatever you like you can start with that okay is switching to cloud good for all uh, okay uh, I would not spend much time on this question. It is uh, in relation to what I said just now. If you are thinking that switching to cloud just means that you go ahead and finish a certification, that means now you have learned cloud. Sorry, that's not the case. But if you are, uh, whatever work you have been doing for this much time, in addition to that, uh, you know, you learn cloud and you understand that how this is related to your work, in that manner, it would be better to move forward. Knowledge of cloud is becoming essential for anybody who is in the industry, a small amount or, or more, but it is essential. So I would suggest that go ahead and learn it, whether you want to, whether you are looking to change or not, but you should have the knowledge. Moving to the last question, what does it take to learn AWS? Okay, uh, I'm sure many of you uh, might be getting started when you are looking at this video. I have done a lot of videos which are there on the channel. Uh, if you want to see them in the order, look at the playlist. But coming back, doesn't matter from where you are learning, I suggest that this is how you should do. First is get the introduction of a particular service. If you are if you are looking at EC2, if you are looking at S3, first take a quick introduction. Even AWS has a, has a video, uh, video list basically on their YouTube channel where they give two, three or you know, five minutes of introduction on every service. Maybe you can take a look at uh, at that video for a particular service. Get the introduction, then go ahead and do a quick practical. Just go ahead and try to create that service, try to access it, things like that. So when you do that, you will see that, oh, there are so many attributes which I have to specify. Some of them you would be able to understand by looking at it, some of them you would not. Then it's time to get back to details, go back to the documentation, AWS documentation, okay? Go back to AWS documentation and read in detail about those services, those attributes, I mean, about that, about those attributes, sorry, for that particular service. That would give you good understanding. And then once you have done that, you can go back and either try those uh, services once again or further, if you feel okay, then you can go ahead and look for white papers and case studies which are involving those services right so that would give you give you a real real good idea and understand that going and doing hands-on is really really important unless until you do that surely you would be missing things which which really which really have value and last which i have written uh, is visualize things so when you are reading something uh, which is my suggestion has worked for me close your eyes and try to think that uh, you know, how the flow is, how does it go from one point to the other? It's very important, right? Or if, if if that doesn't work, take a paper and try to draw. Whatever you have understood, try to draw that. If you are able to do that thing, then it is really good. I think uh, uh, with that, I will end this particular session. I hope you would have got benefited with this. If you did so, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not done already. I request you to please share it with your friends. Uh, help them as well keep learning guys um, technology is changing fast and hence you need to adopt as well thank you bye bye take care